this evening we would like to discuss this uh, <clears throat> assignment to design a CS stage that can drive the load, that was one. And the second is to design a CS stage that has a sufficiently low uh, noise input um, sources so uh, that we can use it as an input stage. If the requirements for both stages, let's say the width and the length and the operating current range that we can find for those stages are uh, have an overlap, then a question can be, uh, can we make the amplifier, the, the active antenna with one stage? If there's no overlap, if the requirements for driving the load are completely different for the requirements uh, having a good noise performance in relation to this source, then we have at least to use two stages. If we need more, well, we need to find out later, but then in any way we need an input stage, a separate input stage and another output stage, and maybe something in between. But if there is overlap in the requirements for the noise performance and for the drive performance, then we could have one stage. And that is the reason that we are at this point uh, going to investigate this. Now, the noise performance is the most difficult because the noise spec is quite, um, well, let's say, even it's even unrealistic for CMOS 18, but maybe you found out already. Uh, so maybe we start with the noise and um, then we do the drive requirements. So another stage drive requirements because that is not so difficult. Um, you see here the presentation about the CS stage noise. And that is a thing I would like to start at because that is basically our starting point. Our starting point is that we have a voltage source and a source capacitance. The source capacitance is about 1.5 uh, PF. That was the, if, if we have the uh, uh, 18 centimeters antenna. <clears throat> um, 1.5 PF and the, <coughs> so the noise sources are coming from the MOSFET <coughs> and for the moment we will forget about the gate DC current noise because uh, the, the, there is no DC current in, uh, in the gate. So what did we find when we, when we studied the theory here for this one? We found in this, this that we can have a voltage spectrum that is, that is here on the, on the sheet that um, equals, let's say, if you simplify this expression, this SVN, you could say it is 4 kT N gamma divided by GM. And N gamma is gamma in, in the, is usually something like two third, N is 1.35. Well, from an engineering point of view and estimation, this the product is one. Let's keep it that way. Of course, it's not really. Uh, uh, exact, but let's keep it simple. So we have a voltage noise spectrum of 4 kT divided by GM times this term, which is given by uh, one plus the ratio of uh, the total input capacitance of the MOSFET divided by the source capacitance. Now we had a procedure for optimization that we are maybe not going to follow because what the procedure for optimization here is that we increase the width and maintain the inversion coefficient. Under those conditions, we found an optimum that the input uh, capacitance of the FET would be equal to the source capacitance. But there is more. We did not account here for the one over F noise. Uh, well, there is an extra term here, one over F noise, but there is also a relation <coughs> between FT and, uh, and the crossover frequency of the one over F noise. It depends a little bit on your inversion, inversion coefficient. And if you uh, dived into SlyCap, you found that, you, that it was something, something like um, between 5,000 and 10,000. This relation. So if Ft is, uh, um, so Fl should be 100 kilohertz, then Ft should be uh, less than one gigahertz. That is uh, 10,000. And if it is, this relation is stronger, then it should, should even be lower. So um, that is something we have to account for. Uh, we cannot make both parameters independent of each other. And this makes the optimization procedure a little bit 
difficult. And uh, But let's see what we have. Let's see if we can do it in the process. And if we cannot do it, what could be the um, uh, advice to, let's say, if there would be a system engineer for this for this project, with the system engineer maybe change the length of the antenna or change the noise spec or whatever. What could we do to make something that works at the end? So let's study this first. Um, if CS, CISS equals CS, then you see this for this term here, one plus CISS divided by CS squared is four. Um, if CISS is much smaller than CS, then this term approaches unity. So if the latter would be true, if the latter case would be true, if we would use that as a starting point, then we could say, well, we have 4KT over GM. So it is as if we have a resistor, one over GM, which is noisy. And the voltage noise of this noise should be below the level because then this term CISS over CS equals zero. Now, um, if you looked at the specification for the antenna amplifier, it said that there should be five nanovolt um, per squared of hertz per meter uh, field uh, strength uh, at the input of the antenna that should be detectable. That is the noise floor, the desired noise floor. And the crossover frequency for where it was allowed to have more low frequency noise was 100 kilohertz. So about. It was a factor two more noise at 100 kilohertz allowed. But the antenna of, uh, let's say, roughly 20 centimeters will only do two point, uh, uh, sorry, point two volts, um, uh, uh, point two as, as a gain. Uh, so because the length is, put, uh, so if we have uh, one volt per meter at the input, we will have point two volt at the output because the length is about 20 centimeters. Which means that if you would convert the noise to equivalent input antenna, which is field strength noise, then um, five nanovolt per square of hertz at the input of the, um, uh, of the amplifier as a floor comes down to one nanovolt per square of hertz. And that is quite a spec. If you would calculate a resistor, the resistance of a resistor that would produce one nanovolt per square root of hertz. Then you do 4 KTR and the square root of that should be one nanovolt per square root of hertz. Then you find this is a resistor of approximately 60 ohm. So the starting point for our design would be to find a FET having at least a GM of a uh, uh, of one over 60 ohm, which is 16 milliamps per volt, 16 point so and so. And that has no contribution yet, yet left for CISS over CS, because that would inter, uh, increase the noise contribution. So then we need even a, a higher GM. So let's take this as a starting point and let's only focus on the noise floor yet to see what we have if we do something like that. We would like to have a high GM for lowest cost. So I would say, uh, let's start with a short, uh, uh, sh the, 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 the shortest channel, which is 180 nanometers and, uh, and then find um, a GM of, 60, of, of 16 milliamps per volt approximately for this fat. Well, then you know we have two parameters to play with. One is the width, because that is still free, and one is the operating current. That's all that's left. We could raise up the operating current because GM increases with the operating current up to critical inversion. After critical inversion, not, not much happens anymore. So uh, critical inversion coefficient for 180 nanometers, maybe you have found it already, is for this process about 32. Um, so let's stay below critical inversion. We will go down anyway with the inversion level because it will turn out that uh, the, the uh, corner frequency of one over F noise will be far too high if we are going to high inversion levels. But let's for the optimization start with something like but between moderate inversion and strong inversion, an inversion coefficient of about 10 and see what width we then need to obtain um, 
uh, with, a, with a current and with a length of 180 nanometers to obtain a GM of approximately 16 milliamp per volt. That would be my first goal. So I would like to go to a Jupiter lab, which is completely clean. And uh, I cannot do it for, this is the full stream you can have. <laughs> um, and let's just build the whole thing. And uh, I prepared some, uh, some uh, schematic. The schematic from LT Spice is this. Here we have a um, antenna, we have the library and we have the, the element the, the representing the noise sources of the FET for a certain width, uh, length and drain current. So we start with uh, just, uh, I have to type it live, yes, because I don't have anything from SlyCap import everything oh import is better with a p in it so and then we have prg equals init project and then we give it a name we'll call it cs stage noise and that will be listed in the html output and that's it and then we have to uh, make a net list of the circuit and the circuit, I give it a file name, file name. And it was, let's see what I had for file. I had CS, CS underscore noise. And of course it is dot ask, um, but I will use the file name also for the picture. So I only use it without extension. Um, and then we do, um, Let's suppress the output for all this stuff if it gives output anyway. So this is what you do with uh, this one. And then we do uh, um, an instruction. I1 equals instruction. You can make as many instructions as you want and have them all with different circuits. Instruction. Um, and we are then, oh, first we need to check to, to uh, create a net list. So that is without an instruction, with, that doesn't need to be with an instruction, it's just a, a, another thing. Make net list of this file name plus the extension dot ask. And then we have an instruction. Let's see if I didn't make any errors here because that would be horrible because I'm doing everything live. So yes, I'm missing the circus, the third title with magnet list. That's what I'm always forgot. And that is um, C S underscore noise, whatever. It is a title for your circuit. And now it should go without any errors. And I hope it also finds no errors in the circuit. Oh, I, I said here, no output, so, um, oh, the, the, sorry, there is no output, so there's no errors in the netlister. And then we are going to uh, check the circuit and add it to the instruction. So we do um, um, I1 dot set circuit, file name plus, dot ask, uh, dot share, sorry, because that is now generated by the net list. And now we should have a message if the circuit is okay, yes or no, and I hope it will be okay. Um, warning, less than two nodes, uh, connections has to load out, but for the rest it's okay. And we know that there are no connections there. So that's what it's supposed to be. Um, let's define some values for the, for the, uh, for the uh, FET. Um, and the antenna, and I want to say, make, make it a little bit quicker, then you don't have to wait for all my horrible typing. So I have a FET with a minimum width. I gave it 60 micro uh, uh, length. I put the current in it like there, here. I set the, the, the uh, gates current to zero and I added the capacitance for the, I gave the capacitance for the antenna. That's what I did. And then we can create a, um, uh, all the stuff for the HTML output. 
So if you don't want to see it on the, uh, um, so I have a uh, circuit data uh, image to uh, image to HTML. Maybe I can do here SVG so you can see the you can see the image here here in this window as well, and the uh, element data and parameters. We can also go to the HTML file later to see everything. So let's um, run it. Run all cells. Let's see if I did everything okay. Well, I see nothing coming out, so probably it's all okay. And there will be some stuff generated. HTML is here. There is already this. Uh, oh, did I do noise? No, I did not yet do noise. Wait a minute. Uh, Okay, it was on an old page. So let's go back. Slide cap, serious noise. Slide cap, here I am. HTML, open in new browser tab, serious noise. And here's the circuit data of the whole thing. You see, I have now a, um, let's say a GM of 16 milliamps per volt. That's what I tuned for you. About 60 ohm, it's a little bit more, 70 ohm, that's what we needed. The inversion coefficient is just above 10 and critical inversion is 31. So that could be a nice starting point. And now you see that the corner frequency for, for the one over F noise is 3.7 megahertz, which is far too uh, hi, and of course you are very interested if the noise is now already met for high frequencies. So let's first make some uh, some noise analysis and plot something. I have it here next to me in another Python file, so that's why I'm I copy it from there. Control C. Control V. So I have the source, I have the output, I set the sim type to numeric, gain type VI, and I do the noise, and well, I want to plot it. So Control C. And if you want to show the plot in your window, you do show is true. That's here what, at the end. And then we see what it's worth. Um, if we have some decent uh, noise results. Now here you see indeed the noise floor is one nanovolt per square of hertz. That is what we expected with about 60 ohm of noise resistance. So that is that is okay. And that's what I tuned for you, of course. And here you see one over F noise also, but the one over F corner frequency is, as you could see in the output, as we saw, far above what we need. It's far too high. And now the question is, what do we have to do to make this better? Well, we said that the noise floor, that's come from the theory, so the optimization of the noise that we that we uh, did, go to the last page here, that the noise floor was completely set by GM. It was 4KT and gamma divided by GM. And of course this ratio. Now we can look in the HTML file, circuit data and see what our input capacitance now is. Our input capacitance is one, is 0.1 PF. So it is 15 times smaller than the source capacitance, which means this contribution can be ignored for the moment. So that is nice. This contribution CISS over CS can be ignored. We are at the floor. And if we are now going to bring down this, this cutoff, uh, this um, uh, corner frequency for one over F noise, we must bring down FT and you know how to do it. FT while maintaining the floor, means that we have to increase the input capacitance. So we have to increase the width and the length both. But by doing so, this second term here, CISS over CS will increase. And that is not what we want. So then we need uh, uh, to in, maybe in increase, we will uh, increase, for example, the current to get, um, to get this, um, 
GM down again, uh, higher, sorry, and one over GM down. So that will be the procedure that we are following. And the question is, will this converge? Yes or no. And if it doesn't converge, then we say, well, of course you can put it in an optimizer. Spy of, uh, 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 Python has optimizers. Uh, in uh, XPy, but I don't want to put now a nonlinear optimizer on this, and uh, and uh, I just want to show you the process how you can do in a few quick steps a scan if it is possible, yes or no, and what we need to do. So let's, uh, if I step uh, uh, with quick steps, you know, large steps, I always do a factor two. So. 180 nano will be 360 nano and 60 micro will be 120 micro. This must bring the corner frequency for the cutoff frequency down, but we can already predict that it will bring this level at, uh, at uh, here 100 megahertz, the one nano volt per square of hertz level, it will bring it up. That is what is the prediction. So um, let's look at the, um, I have to put this open, though that's not necessary. The low uh, frequency, uh, the corner frequency of low frequency noise is 3.7 megahertz now. So remember this number and run the whole thing again. I already uh, changed the, the, the width and the length, and then we will see the result. If you want now, indeed, the corner frequency now appears to be. If I do, if I measure it from the from the graph, it is one megahertz. So it came down definitely. But you see also that the floor comes up, and we can see here in the data. Uh, I don't know if this is now up to date. So let's do it here again. I think I am looking at the wrong output because I didn't see a change. So let's go to, uh, oh. it's now 17 milliamps per volt and we are at one megahertz as we could read from the output from the graph. So, this is still okay, the, 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 but the contribution, so this GM is okay, but the contribution of this second term has increased here, the CISS over CS. And that should be visible from CISS because it was 100 femto and now it is 300 femto. So that is already increasing, 350 femto is, uh, what do I say? Yeah, 350 femto. So, we can do a few steps of this, a few steps. Um, let's say we do one more step of a factor two, why not? Yes, we are not yet down where we want to be. So we do 720 and the factor two is easy for calculations. So, and here 240, 240 and run another and what we expect is again that the low for, uh, the cut corner frequency here will go down and this level will go up. So run all cells. And this is of course what we uh, looked at. It's now going in the, in, in the right direction, but still this one is a little bit increasing. And um, we could say, well, bring the current up, up. We can bring the current up, but what will happen if we bring the current up? If we bring the current up for the same amount of input capacitance and, uh, and we are not in critical inversion, definitely not, then FT will go up again. And this corner frequency will also go up again. And that is the pain here. It's simply not feasible in the project. So let's bring the current up and then you can see it. Let's make the current also double here, yeah, five milliamps. So um, we bring the current up and now the corner frequency is about one megahertz again. See, we are back this level, the level, the floor level has gone down. So we need to bring the current up even more to bring the current to allow, uh, sorry, this level down to one nanovolt per square of hertz. You could think of uh, 
well, putting there whatever, let's say you can double, double, double is the quickest step, yes. And this cadence has optimizers for this, of course, because this is quite, uh, well, it's stupid work if you just look to the activity, but it's good to understand the process and the variables because now you don't need to go on for hours. You see there's a showstopper. You cannot combine because you are simply at a too high inversion level. You cannot combine the uh, GM, the low noise floor with the corner frequency that should be below 100 kilohertz. So if you somehow did what I did here, you made this kind of plot and you draw the correct conclusions, then, um, well, then I say you're the hero of 